Hello, Gemini. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to January of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Yeah. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It's so wonderful to meet you. Thank you for tuning in. If you are returning, hey guys. So uh, we're going to get into the energies for you, Gemini, for the month of January 2022. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start by speaking to Gemini Rising. Um, and then in the second half of the video, we're just going to get some general card pulls, general energies for all of the energy of Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, also maybe even the Cross Watcher. Yeah. Now for the first half of the video, while I'm speaking to Gemini Rising, please understand that I am speaking to you from a true sidereal point of view, the true sidereal astrological system, not mainstream or tropical. If you're new to that, I encourage you, I invite you to stick around and give it a listen, see how it resonates for you. Um, if you're also, if you're new to uh, sidereal astrology, you've never seen your chart before um, and you would like to get your chart and maybe even like a little bit of a, a, a mini sidereal reading, especially if you're new. If you're new to sidereal astrology, you haven't haven't really dove into it before, I, I recommend that at least, you know, send me an email, let me know that you're interested and um, I'll get you your chart, but also I'll give you a, a little a bit of an interpretation from my uh, intuitive point of view using this system. Um, if you're interested in that, just send me an email. My email can be found in the description box below. If you would like to get a private reading with me, whether it's through astrology or just a regular general tarot reading from me, I am available for that as well. Again, send me an email. All the information, um, information about the readings that I offer, some of the readings that I offer at least can be found in the description box below. If you would like to get some extra content from me throughout the month, just outside of these monthly readings, um, if you would like to support the channel, you know, help keep the channel going, I encourage you to join the family over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Um, there are a number of tiers there. Um, and some of the tiers have some extra benefits other than just getting extra content with me. Um, and it's a great way to support the channel and help to keep the channel going. Yeah, without you guys, I would not be able to be here. So thank you so much for your support. Um, other than that, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends, especially if you guys are starting to get that sidereal bug. Yeah, yeah. Um, share it with your friends, share it with your family. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. Yeah. All right, Gemini, let's get into this. So starting the session off, speaking to my Gemini risings here. Now, the title that I got for you, Gemini, is I want or deserve more. And it is that you as I was looking through the chart for you, we're going to get into that in a second. I'll show you the chart. But as I was looking through the chart for you, that's what I was feeling, and I was recognizing that it's a very similar energy to what Aries is experiencing. Um, Aries reading is titled, I, uh, It Could There Be More? So Aries is kind of questioning whether there is more, whether they could find more, achieve more. For you, Gemini, it is, I want and deserve more. And a lot of this is... Uh, is revolving around or surrounding your interpersonal relationships, yes. But specifically, I was feeling it, it's, it's surrounding your friends group, your circle, the people that you are closest to you or that you find have been closest to you for an extended amount of time or however amount of time. Um, we have some major things going on this month. Um, we have the, the, the big focus for the collective this month is the full moon and also, at least from my point of view as, a, as an astrologer, as a reader here, it's the full moon and also the conjunction between the sun and Pluto this month. The conjunction between the sun and Pluto happens on the 16th, the full moon happens on the 17th, and then Uranus goes direct on the 18th. Um, and as I've been reading through uh, each of the signs so far for the collective this month, I'm starting to recognize and realize that this transit of Uranus through Aries, which is currently retrograde right now, is heavily affecting us. And a lot of the effects or a lot of the changes that this 
uh, transit of Uranus is influencing within the core of our being right now, our self-identity and whatnot, seems like it's having the opportunity to come to a head this month with the conjunction between the sun and moon i'm sorry between the sun and um and pluto and then the full moon the day after that this conjunction between the sun and pluto is like a big infusion of power within your soul and then the universe is adding an extra boon of power or at least potential power with the full moon that is right after that okay um i think well, let's just talk about what I wrote down here and then we'll look at the chart. So some of the notes that I wrote down for you here, um, the big thing for you right now this month feels like you, some of you may be, there may be some energies around clearing, cleaning up your social life, okay? This could be a powerful time to make new and better connections, new and better connections in terms of something of a higher vibration. That's what I really feel like you're coming to the realization of this month. And you may have been in the process of coming to this realization throughout this retrograde transit of Uranus, which Uranus started, uh, went uh, stationed, excuse me, stationed retrograde back in August of 2021, like mid mid to late August of 2021. And I feel like at, the, at first for many of us, what this transit represented was quite nebulous at first. Like we really didn't quite understand what was going on, why certain things needed to change and why others maybe didn't need to change. But now, I mean, Uranus is about to go direct on the 18th of January. So I feel like at this point, we're all at a place where we can, we have a deep understanding of how our sense of self is being shifted with this Uranus retrograde transit. And so for you, Gemini, uh, Gemini rising, of course, um, I feel like you have started to understand. I just heard the theory behind needing to have a better social group or a more high vibe social group. Um, now the focus for you this month is between your sixth and eighth houses. Again, we'll look at the chart in a second, but the conjunction between the sun and Pluto and also the full moon that is the day after, that happens in your seventh house. And this is the house of your interpersonal relationships maybe legal ma legal matters okay but the something that i heard for you as i was channeling this energy is quote this is lame i want more excitement and fun but on a more nurturing level and that takes us to what M mars is doing because a mars mars is affecting a lot uh, uh, is really affecting us a lot right now especially with the fact that mars and venus are about to find meet their conjunction later on with uh that actually happens in february and then finally on march 3rd march uh, mars venus and pluto conjunct and that to me is like a blast off point for us to be more in alignment with ourselves there seems to be a union between masculine and feminine energy that is coming together in the beginning of this year for us to blast off into new horizons <clears throat> come after the third of march right so mars for you is transiting through your sixth house which is ruled by virgo um also ruled by mercury which is your ruling planet um and because of, but the, the the thing about it is the sixth house is all about your health and wellness completely whether the uh, uh, spiritual mental emotional physical all that stuff and i feel like you guys are starting to recognize that some of the friends groups or some of the social settings that you have been um key keying with are not the healthiest or at least you want you're finding that you want or need something more nurturing something more conducive to the health and wellness of your body of your soul in terms of your friends groups okay I'm here, I, I wrote down desiring or seeking better social connections that align with greater health and wellness. Yeah, so that's a big theme for you. Um, uh, the other thing that I wrote down here is that Mercury is, Mercury, your ruling planet is retrograde from your eighth house into your seventh house. Now, the interesting about this, <laughs> Gemini, is that the interesting thing about this is that as I was kind of channeling this energy for you, I kind of felt like you were a little excited, or at least you get a little excited. Some of you actually find Mercury retrograde to be really fun. 
I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I just get this really adventurous energy from you. Um, and so anyway, but the fact that Mercury is moving retrograde through your eighth house, which is um, the house of ruled by Scorpio, this is the house of um, death and rebirth, and also maybe even sex and um, other people's money also. But uh, there's also a mysticism or occult energy that is that is ruled by the eighth house and for you gemini with mercury moving retrograde here i was kind of feeling like some of your psychic ability might be heightened at this time even if you're not really into the occult or mysticism or anything like that i mean maybe you are to a certain extent because you're here watching a tarot and astrology reading but even if you're not that much inclined into it personally yourself like it doesn't mean you have a problem with it it's just really not your thing i feel like some of those aspects might actually really be helping you here there's a level i, I was getting this feeling of while mercury is retrograde through your eighth house i feel like your psychic awareness or your ability to see deeper under the surface of a situation is heightened. And then Mercury moves back into your seventh house, which is where this big focus is for you. So you have the opportunity, just like everybody else during this Mercury retrograde, to really rewrite the programming. And that programming has could have a lot to do with your interpersonal relationships, your friendships, maybe even your family. Now, the other thing that really ties into this, and I was picking up on this energy before I noticed this aspect, but the last thing that I want to say is the, the, the retrograde transit of Uranus is happening in your 11th house. And the 11th house is, first of all, where you have Aries. Um, the, I believe Aries is the ruler of your 11th house. Again, we'll look at the chart in a second. But um, the 11th house is all about your social groups, the communities or the groups that you are a part of, the connections that you make with the people around you. The 11th house is also about philanthropy and help and being of service to others. You know, similar to the way that Virgo is, but, but Virgo is a little bit different. The sixth house is a little bit different, but the 11th house is all about your social groups, okay? The communities, the organizations, the, I mean, the Facebook groups you're a part of. Like, it, it could be that trivial, but that's kind of the energy that we're looking at here. And that's directly connected to what, everything that's happening in your seventh house, right? Okay, enough rambling. Let's, let me show you the chart. So here you have your chart for January. This is Gemini rising for January of 2022. And as you can see here, Gemini, all of this energy is concentrated right over here between your sixth and eighth houses. Now that's not unusual. That's for going on for everybody right now. All of our energies or the bulk of the energies are all concentrated really with one, one main house is the focus, and that's the house where we have the conjunction of the Sun and Pluto plus the, the, the full moon, right? Although the, the full, the sun will be, in terms of the full moon, the sun is in Sagittarius, the moon is in Gemini, which happens to be your sign, right? Um, but so for you, the main focus, Gemini, here is the seventh house, all right? Um, so, and then... And then you have Uranus there in your 11th house. Okay, so this really is an energy of you placing a deeper amount of focus on the relationships that you have with people. You have a card here, it is the Nine of Pentacles, okay? But it did come out in reverse. Um, so I think what a lot of you are facing right now, which is fun, which is really interesting, Gemini, what I'm getting here is what's really interesting is that this is actually fairly similar to what Virgo is going through, which makes sense because you two share a ruling planet, a Mercury, right? But um, what you have here, Gemini, in terms of your interpersonal relationships, what's going on here in the seventh house for you? Also, keep in mind that Venus is retrograde right now, and she's retrograde through your seventh house. So Venus is in influencing a change in our alignment with personal values and and romantic relationships, interpersonal relationships, whatever. I I get I don't really get much of a romantic vibe from you here in this moment, Gemini, or with this energy. This is more just platonic social type energies. It could have to do with your romance, but I if, if it does, your romantic life. But if it does, that feels fairly secondary to just the overall platonic relationships that you have. 
Now, in terms of this seventh house energy here, Gemini, let me switch back. In terms of your relationships here, Gemini, you do have the nine of pentacles in reverse that's come out with the five of pentacles in reverse. So really what I feel like you're facing here during this time is the fact that you may have given up a level of your independence, your sovereignty, your ability to think freely for the sake of making friends or being social or like even just having a social life. This is definitely a FOMO energy here. Nine of pentacles in reverse, five of pentacles in reverse. You have been or you are dealing with the lack mentality or you're dealing, you're coming to the realization, ace of swords, of how you've been lacking in self-awareness, self-respect, maybe. Um, and there may have been a bit of a juggling energy, although you do have the Ace of Swords here. Underneath the Ace of Swords is the Two of Pentacles. So there may be a little bit of a juggling energy here for you, Gemini. Um, but actually, really, what I feel... And okay, so the, the, the juggling energy that I'm feeling for you actually was in the past, okay? I feel like you were really... For some of you, I heard you've been taking some pretty extreme steps or extreme actions just to keep the status quo just to keep the peace something like that um but now what i see for you moving forward with this ace of swords and two of pentacles is you balancing the scales for yourself which is absolutely what the seventh house ruled by libra would represent or could influence for you okay i want to get a little bit more on this this fomo energy here right but this is all this is that realization the nine of pentacles with the five of pentacles both in reverse is the realization is the understanding that yeah you do want or you do deserve more next that's come out here is the five of cups all right so and i guess what i first i want to say is there's going to be a little bit of remorse a little bit of mourning here in terms of letting certain situations go but actually i feel like that was the energy of the past, that five of cups. Again, FOMO, missing out on something. What is this five of cups? Or some more energy here for Gemini for this nine of pentacles, five of pentacles energy in reverse here. Queen of pentacles. There is definitely, see, but there, uh, first of all, there is definitely a level of self-respect here that's coming into greater alignment for you, but also the Queen of Pentacles absolutely would represent that phrase, I want and or deserve more, okay? Many of you may have even been breaking your back to try and appease people or please people, but not really getting in anything in return. Um, and that's also kind of where this Five of Cups energy comes from. I don't really feel like you're mourning the loss of anything or anyone right now. I kind of feel like you would be mourning the loss of, I guess what I want to say is how you have treated yourself, how you may have put yourself on the back burner for others just to keep the peace or just to be deemed, not even to seem acceptable, but to be deemed acceptable by other people, all right? definitely definitely a big change in your alignment in terms of this anything else for gemini rising here for the month of january temperance in reverse Ooh, okay what's this temperance in reverse for gemini bam the king of swords so so gemini for the month yeah okay and then the lovers is at the bottom of the deck now first and foremost i want to say the lovers does translate or represent this healing and balancing of masculine energy that is then leading to the the fusion uh, or the union between the masculine and the feminine mars and venus in the future okay um the, also the lovers is giving me for you well first of all the, the lovers is you gemini all right um so maybe you've been at odds with yourself okay but the lovers is giving me definitely an energy of loving yourself first loving yourself unconditionally all right and then so then with this you have temperance in reverse with the king of swords i really truly feel like that gemini over this over this time period of uranus being retrograde through aries which gemini um well sorry with, with uranus being retrograde through aries 
this has been calling into question or helping you to realize how you may have been at odds with yourself. And at this point, now that we have this conjunction here, what's going on in your seventh house, now we have the realization of how things have in fact been in balance. King of Swords with the Temperance card in reverse. Now, Temperance also represents Sagittarius and Venus is retrograde through Sagittarius for all of us. So, um, so there's that other connection. The expansiveness of Sagittarius is helping you to get that bigger picture. The retrograde motion of Mercury, which is right here for you as of today, January 5th, it is in your eighth house, but it's going to be going retrograde back through the eighth house back into your seventh house to then move direct. So this is another understanding or another ability to understand how things have been imbalanced and then to bring that balance into check, okay? Now, um, the last thing I wanna show you guys here is the fact that Mars is right down here in your sixth house. Now, Mars started in Scorpio, where you have mercury in the eighth house which is the ruler uh, scorpio is the ruler of the eighth house but for you specifically capricorn rules your eighth house gemini but anyway i digress mars started in scorpio digging up a lot of uh, um hidden aspects in terms of your masculine side or your drive your action how you move forward what you take action towards the way that you take action towards it your sense of self your identity because also aries rules i'm sorry mars rules aries right but Mars was going, was transiting through Scorpio. Mars is officially in Ophiuchus at this time, at least as of the 5th of January. So now there is the healing process in terms of Martian energy, in terms of your masculine energy, your drive, your action forward. The healing process is happening now as Mars is moving through healing Ophiuchus. And this is where we get that focus of um, your health and wellness, wanting to be involved with people that are more or or in social groups social settings right because uranus is retrograde in aries your sense of identity your sense of self in the 11th house so this is your 11th house is your social groups right so this is changing your identity in terms of the types of social groups that you wish to connect with you wish to align with and the general focus for you gemini throughout this period is the fact that this needs to be realigned in terms of what is going to bring you greater health and wellness at overall, which is also, I'm hearing, going to lead you to greater abundance. Now, you do have the Empress here in reverse. There has, in terms of your masculine energy or your action, right, there has been a level of, yes, there's been a level of uh, enabling here, right? Because the sixth house ruled by Virgo isn't necessarily just your personal health and wellness, but it's the health and wellness of others. The sixth house often tends to be a house where your service to others comes into focus, which is also related to the 11th house, right? So some of you really may have been enabling other people, other people's negative negativity or, or um, um, losing yourself sacrificing or losing a sense of yourself in order for you to be again deemed acceptable by others but what we have here now is the ace of cups to the king of pentacles okay instead of continuing to enable people it's time for you to really love yourself ace of cups and get really connected and grounded and centered into your self your sense of self what it is you truly want or need what it is you truly value in life and standing up for that the hermit okay this is the follow your inner light gemini and then you have the Ace of Pentacles here. This is a really a brand new beginning. And for some of you, this may even translate into your business or your finances here because um, Venus, which is retrograde right now, which is helping influence this shift in values. Venus also represents your relation to abundance, your relationship to abundance, health and, uh, uh, um, and finances, okay? 
Some of you actively may be becoming more business oriented through this time. If this is not strictly platonic or maybe even romantic for you, this also could definitely have to do with business associations, business partnerships, the type of business you interact with. I do feel for some of you, there is some sort of um, group type business energy you've been involved with that really is not fulfilling for you. Some of you may even branch out on your own with this King of Pentacles energy after or throughout this period. You may be, you may be getting into a more, um, I'm hearing financially stable position by going off on a business for your own. That Nine of Pentacles that came out in the beginning for you could absolutely mean uh, uh, represent entrepreneurship. Okay, being self-sufficient. But this is really beautiful for you, Gemini. Uh, to close out this part of the reading for my Gemini Risings, let's get some closing messages from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, and then we're gonna shift into just a general reading for all, yeah? Last shuffle here. So for my Gemini Risings, what's your closing message here, Gem uh, Spirit, for Gemini Rising? Feeling the world and then a deep breath. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look, overall energy is the power of purpose. A big theme for all of us here, especially with Uranus being retrograde through Aries, which is our sense of self. There has been a huge push towards reconnecting with our true alignment or our true sense of purpose in life. Your closing message here, Gemini, is, or Gemini Rising, is um, feeling the world and a deep breath. You've been too focused on the world outside of you. Um, it, it, I get the feeling that you've been, you've been so focused on feeling the world or Aligning yourself to what others deem acceptable instead of aligning yourself to what you truly deem acceptable. So in terms of this energy of feeling the world, feeling the energies around you, being so wrapped up in what other people say, being wrapped up even in the fear of missing out, the FOMO, you're being asked to take a deep breath and step back from that. You don't have to you don't have to completely disconnect from people, okay? Especially if these are people that you really love and appreciate, especially if they're like family to you. But you're asked you're being asked at this point to step back from that collective energy, take a deep breath and allow yourself, wow, there we go. Allow yourself to connect to your higher purpose or the power of purpose, your true purpose here, what it is you really are meant to be doing. And then you also you have that with the royal you, which I see as in this deck, I see as your higher self, okay? And then underneath that, Gemini, you have ears wide open. Um, so I feel like this is a moment for you to really step back from feeling the world so much, take a deep breath, and connect with your higher self so that you can get greater connect get connected to your higher self and really listen to your higher self so that you can have this greater connection to your purpose and also let me go back to the chart just to show you what i also really feel like is going to be helping you to really connect with your higher self is the fact that mercury is moving retrograde through the eighth house which for some of you i feel like is expanding your psychic or intuitive awareness and as allowing you to hear i even wrote that down here when i was channeling um it may help you to get greater insight no no i didn't write it down i think i wrote that down for someone else but it, that's kind of what i was i was picking up on you may be able to hear more of yourself more of your inner voice to allow you to shine more of your inner light yeah excellent I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to reset. And then we're going to get into just the general reading for Gemini energy for the month of January. Yeah? Be right back. Okay. 
Hello there, Gemini. If you are just now tuning in, if you have skipped the beginning half of this reading, welcome. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Welcome to January 2022. Yeah, we are just going to get at this point, we're going to get into a general card pull for the energy of Gemini for the month of January 2022. This has this part of the reading at least has no astro uh, astrological discipline or uh, practice affiliation. This can be for any system that you practice. This is also for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, whatever. Yeah. Also could be for a cross watcher. So as always, you guys keep in mind that this is a general reading. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, just to recap, I am available for private readings if you'd like to get one. Also, if you're looking for some more energy or some more readings for me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon. All the information for all of that can be found on the description box below, yeah? I'm gonna start with the Energy Oracle deck for you, Gemini. Five shuffles here, one. So what is the energy for Gemini for the month of January, 2022? Just general energies, please. Spirit for Gemini. Two. What messages do we have for my Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? This is three. For the month of January, 2022, yeah. For Gemini, this is four. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, January, 2022. General messages, please, Spirit. This is five. All right, Gemini. Let's see what we've got for you. What's going on? What's going on for Gemini? Okay, well, the first thing that I'm hearing, Gemini, is greater self-awareness, and that definitely does uh, resonate with what I channeled for Gemini Rising. If you're interested, you didn't watch it, maybe go ahead and check it out, see how it resonates for you, yeah? Okay, yes, yeah, see, look at that. First card out is the thinking woman. Now, uh, for, okay, so I am feeling a romantic vibe here for this thinking woman. Now, keep in mind, guys, that Venus is retrograde right now. Venus is going to be retrograde until sometime in February, I believe. Yes, but um, because Venus is in retrograde right now, there is definitely, for many of us, especially if you're more romantically, like consciously, you're more romantically oriented right now, your love life and your interpersonal relationships and also your values have the opportunity to be reshaped and reworked okay and with this you know retrograde motion of uranus through aries right now this is reworking our sense of sense of self our sense of identity of course that is in terms of sidereal astrology okay in tropical astrology i believe uranus is in taurus which makes sense, which really makes sense, okay? I, I encourage you guys to check out both systems or all of the systems and see how it resonates with you. But anyway, you have the thinking woman here so far, Gemini. Feminine energy doesn't have to be a woman, okay? You could be a man uh, or, or even just a masculinely oriented energy um, and still be thinking about this, especially if you're a man or more um, masculinely oriented. I mean, you could be a man and be more femininely oriented like I am, but um, either way, if you're more masculinely oriented, I feel like your feminine is coming through and really helping you to reshape your values. Venus in retrograde. Okay. So you have thinking woman here. Um, but some of you, especially in terms of romance, some of you are rethinking your relationships. You're trying to understand them on a deeper level. Have here next you have financial constraints in reverse which in this deck this is um, this is applicable or this is more uh, or, or this can represent the five of pentacles which could be a lack of mentality and one of the things that I channeled for Gemini in the Gemini rising, rising situation was FOMO fear of missing out but this is this is in reverse here so Gemini I do feel like or maybe even cross watcher you could be a cross watcher in a relationship with a Gemini and you may have found that you got into this relationship with this individual, if, if this resonates for you, from a lack mentality type of place. 
And now you're going through a bit of a renaissance here. You're starting to realize this and you're starting to understand how you don't want to be attached to or involved with individuals from a place of lack mentality or from a place of feeling like you're missing out, FOMO, okay? And then you have indecision in reverse. Okay, that's interesting. I'm getting two things with the indecision in reverse. First thing that I'm getting is that you may have been indecisive because of this lack mentality type of energy. You, there was like a feeling of like you, you wanted to move forward, you wanted to do something else, you wanted to get going, you wanted to have better relationships, you wanted to have a better love life. You just didn't know why, potentially and or you didn't know how to go about it for some of you there was fear of literally letting some people go because you didn't want to you didn't want to deal with the disapproval now the second thing that i'm getting with indecision in reverse that's connected to financial constraints in reverse which is again connected to the thinking woman which is upright is you may be coming out of this indecisive energy rest and rejuvenation I wanted to pull a little bit more on the indecision and I actually do want to, I actually do want to, um, Door to Spirit is at the bottom of the deck now. Uh, I do feel like you're getting a heavy infusion of spiritual energy, self-awareness here. Um, but rest and rejuvenation is, has been and is going to help you with this indecision or this indecisiveness if you have been indecisive. Um, I really feel like you, you you would definitely benefit, Gemini or Crosswatcher. You would really de benefit from taking some time away, allowing yourself to rest and rejuvenate, and allowing yourself to connect with yourself. Okay, um, something that came out that's causing uh, like I'm seeing I'm seeing um, the Hermit right now, and that did come out in the um, Gemini Rising section. Uh, but you, yeah, I'm definitely feeling a very hermit energy for you, very Virgo energy for you, sixth house energy for you, taking some time away to just be with yourself, to find your inner light or to get a stronger connection from your inner light to receive the guidance that you need to move forward in this situation. Yeah. Let me give this, I'm, I'm moving to the tarot now. One shuffle. Now I'm just going to give this one more. And I really want to talk about this indecision. Yeah. Last shuffle here. So, okay. So what is this indecision here for you, Gemini? What can we get for Gemini here? Okay, well, first of all, overall energy is right now is strength. And what I'm feeling here for you, Gemini, is this is the strength and the empowerment I'm hearing to really allow yourself to focus on what it is you really truly need. Some of you have been afraid to go within and ask yourself what it is that you need there is some sort of energy here for you gemini that you're dealing with of fomo or like really allowing yourself to be pushed aside or the truth of what it is you really need from the people around you from your friends from your romantic situations maybe even from your family pushing that aside so that you can be seen as or deemed more acceptable or acceptable at all by the people around you by your community and all that stuff the friends that you associate with and all that kind of stuff but what strength is saying here for you gemini is this is giving you the ability to really turn around and face yourself and ask yourself what do i need from these relationships? What do I need from life? Why am I so afraid of missing out? What am I afraid of missing out on, right? That should be the subtitle to your reading, FOMO, fear of missing out, because that's a big energy I'm feeling for you right now. But let's go a little bit deeper. What's this indecision for Gemini, please, Spirit? What's this indecision for Gemini? Ah, oh, death. For my Gemini Risings here, this is Scorpio energy. And for Gemini Rising, Mercury is going to be retrograde, starting its retrograde motion through their eighth house, which is ruled by Scorpio, okay? So in terms of the indecision here, 
Now, you, and you don't have to be a Gemini rising in sidereal astrology to, uh, to to resonate with this, okay? This is really a big old general reading for the just for the big old collective of Gemini. Uh, but in terms of this indecision, it seems like it really does seem like you're coming out of this indecision. Again, for my Gemini risings here, this is another representation of the fact that Mercury moving retrograde through your eighth house could really be giving you that deeper understanding that you need to come out of a level of indecision. But for generally speaking, there is a transformation that's happening and I definitely feel like you're coming out of this level or you have the ability to come out of this indecisive energy okay um, and that really is facilitated and helped for you by taking some time away in terms of rest and rejuvenation here okay nothing else has come out there but at the bottom of the deck Gemini you do have justice again Gemini rising in sidereal astrology this is your seventh house and this is all this is the big area in which you're experiencing this infusion of power this month again gemini rising in sidereal astrology but generally speaking yes justice is going to be served for you should you allow yourself to come out of this indecision and make some sort of change okay the scales are absolutely going to be balanced all right. Um, I, I still I feel like I want to get a little bit more on this. Anything else that you want to say for Gemini here? Yes. The King of Wands. Officially, the King of Wands is Leo, but I'm also hearing Aries energy with this. Very much so. Aries is still a fire sign, just like Leo. Uh, Uranus in Aries in sidereal astrology. Okay. But the King of Wands here says allow yourself to be proactive allow yourself to take the steps that you need allow yourself to build a level of confidence but more specifically allow yourself to experience that confidence with yourself allow yourself to be confident and to make the changes that you need to make for yourself nobody else's decision but yours gemini nobody's you don't see the king of wands out here letting anybody tell him or her what she can or they cannot can or cannot do right king of wands doesn't just have to be mass uh, a man yes the king of wands is masculine energy and yes this is masculine energy that translates into your drive your action what it is you move forward with what it is you take action towards how you take that action mars energy aries energy but you could be a woman okay Th this is not gender specific this is this is energy allow yourself to be confident to take the steps that you know you need to take it's no one else's decision but yours gemini okay point blank period there's 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 no if ands or buts about that bam i'm gonna leave it right there i'm gonna leave it right there because we're back to strength at the bottom of the deck again more leo energy for my gemini risings wait gemini rising no I thought I thought you had some fifth house energy going on, which is what Leo is ruled, what what Leo rules. But no, you don't. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. The general energy here, strength. Allow yourself to face yourself and ask yourself, what do I really need, and how can I make that happen? That will allow you to move forward. Six of Swords with the King of Wands. Allow yourself to take this action, Gemini. You deserve it. And, 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 and okay, yeah, you deserve it. For no other reason, Gemini, other than you are a human being with a right to strive, to live as you see fit, outside of the, of the confines of whomever it is you find yourself surrounded by at the moment, right? Excellent. Closing Oracle Guidance. You know, Gemini, I want to go with Closing Guidance for you from the magic of unicorns here. This deck really has a very personal, individual resonance, in my opinion. Um, it's the, the, I found the main theme of this deck is really connecting with your personal unicorn or that magical type of energy. And since we're talking all about you being greater oriented around what is right for you this feels like a really good deck to go with this feels like we could get a lot of encouragement for you on a personal level so here we go three shuffles one two and three 
closing oracle guidance, please, Gemini, or please, Spirit, for Gemini for the month of January 2022. What closing oracle guidance do you have? What encouragement do you have? Yes, indeed. Oh, that's it. No, that's it right there. And that is so beautiful. Ooh, okay, overall energy for your closing guidance here, Gemini, is card number 12, which does boil down to a three. Um, third house is your house, right? Ruled by Mercury, okay. Uh, but it is the freedom of truth. Communicate honestly. Be who you truly are. I mean, come on, like really really you can't get any more obvious than that right be who you are if you find yourself saying i want and or deserve more take the action towards it and then you know, officially the card that has come out here on the table for you is card number eight open to abundance believe you deserve accept plenty and prosperity yes there it is right there if you find yourself saying i want and or deserve more believe it gemini and then take that action to get it okay allow yourself to feel empowered allow yourself to be feel emboldened yes Alrighty, kids there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, all of the information for that can be found in the description box below, especially if you're interested in getting your sidereal chart interpreted. Also, if you would like to support the channel or join the family or uh, I mean we're all a family here but if you want to join the closer family the the tighter circle um, and have more influence on the channel get more content from me throughout the month check me out over on patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations that link can also be found in the description box below and as always please make sure to smash that like button. Yes, send me a comment. Let me know how this resonated with you or just say hi. Share this with your friends. And as always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I love you all so much. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yeah? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>